think of this as the heartbeat of our country. Up until recent years, our vitals were fine, but now it seems we're approaching. We begin this hour with the debt crisis, of course. Minute by minute, the nation inches closer to the brink of default. And the countdown, less than seven full days before the federal government could run out of money and be unable to pay its bills. It's been more than a year since U.S. debt was downgraded by Standard & Poor's. Well, now another credit rate agency, Moody's, is threatening now to do the same. I take you back to 2008 when Lehman Brothers collapsed. The largest Chapter 11 filing on record, $613 billion. It's swift demise, shocking Lehman's 26,000 strong workforce. The mood inside is, is somber. People are, you know, coming to say their, you know, goodbye to everybody. Breaking news, stocks plummeting, Wall Street suffering. It's worst point drop since the 9-11 terror attacks as the banking meltdown produces the largest bankruptcy in American history. This is a lot bigger than Lehman Brothers collapsing. This is not a Republican issue. It's not a Democratic issue. It's not Tea Party doesn't or independent, whatever. This is an American issue. to me just how serious the situation is. Tens of millions of people are out of work, our country's debt is piling higher and higher, and here I was totally in the dark about it all. Was I the only one who hadn't known? I wanted to know what other people knew on the matter, so I decided to find out. Um, I think it's like six to seven trillion dollars I think like a couple trillion dollars like a billion or trillion I don't know exactly how much but I think a lot a lot a lot I can put a figure on it but it's pretty high you know it turns out I wasn't the only one missing some details for the record our country currently has 16 trillion dollars in debt and climbing every second Questions started to flood my mind. How could this have happened? How should the country achieve the best quality of life? Government growth is the best way to sustainably fuel economic growth, isn't it? I started doing some research, and I asked some friends to help. What we found was stunning. Using advanced equations noting benefits from both sectors, economist Gerald Scully with Public Life found that up to a certain point, government growth can play a positive role in bringing higher economic growth and quality of life forward. But after that point, both begin to suffer. For us in the U.S., that point is about 15.5% of our GDP. Today, this is where we are, at near 30%. Let's look at it another way. In terms of a multiplier, this is basically a number that tells us the effective gain from any dollar spent in any economic sector. A multiplier of two would indicate that the sector you chose doubled your money. A multiplier of one would return the same amount it was given, and anything less than one would be a waste as it returns less money into the economy than it took. Our government has a multiplier of about 0.6 to 0.8. So as you see, our economy seems to be losing money from each dollar received by the government. But that's only the half of it. At the same time that dollar is in the government, it's missing out on its chance to gain value elsewhere. Economists call this the cost of opportunity. Basically an opportunity cost means that uh, we have alternatives in which we can place our time, our money, etc. And an opportunity cost is basically the value of the best alternative of our time. 
So now that you've seen this side of things, how about we ponder our future direction?